Hey guys, this is What If Declan Turtle Gear Twins movie, part one, with a better mic. So there are going to be a few changes to this story. Inka Midoriya, Deku's mom, is going to be the number three hero, and she's going to have an ice quirk in place of Rei, because Rei is not going to exist in this What If. And Endeavor and her got married because they both wanted to just pass all night, but realized that they were too weak. Also, Endeavor's daughter Fiumi won't exist, and Natsu and Toy are going to be twins, so this means that they're both going to have the same quirk. And all of Endeavor's children are going to be arrogant since they're blessed with good quirks, and Endeavor's going to be more doting than this would have. And when Endeavor was training Natsu and Toy on how to use their fire quirks, he got them cryogenic freezers. So basically, a cryogenic freezer is where cells or whole tissues are preserved by cooling to sub zero temperatures. So Dobby, aka Toya, is not going to exist. Because with the cryo freezer, it's going to constantly keep their bodies cool so they don't burn themselves due to the backlash of their quirks. Which is going to keep their bodies frozen all day so they have to use their quirks all day to warm themselves up, strengthening their quirks and building up a natural resistance of their own flames. Now to Deku and Todoroki. When Deku and Todoroki were born, they both had crystal white hair and blue eyes like their older brothers. And Devil would allow them to play, but he would also make them do some light physical training because their quirks had not yet awakened. Now it was time for Todoroki and Izuku to awaken their quirks that were taken to the quirk doctor. After running some tests, the doctor said, Shoto's quirk is absolute zero. And Deku's quirk is absolute hot. Absolute hot is the hottest temperature, and absolute zero is the coldest temperature. Izuku's abilities will consist of being able to manipulate and control his pure white flames, but also the ability to control other people's flames. He will also be able to ignite his flames from dry substances. And after mastering his quirk, he will create fire to thin air rather than an extension from his body. And Todoroki's abilities will consist of being able to manipulate his pure white ice, but also other liquids and turn them into ice. He will also be able to change the degree of liquids in his ice. And after mastering the ability, he will be able to create it out of thin air because theoretically that is possible. Both of them have perfect bodies for their quirks. Deku has an absolute hot body, and Todoroki has an absolute cold body. This will cause them to be impervious to their elements, so they won't feel the effects of overusing their quirks. The only downside will be the major loss of stamina. So to combat this, Deku and Todoroki are going to be much more fit since they have to have more stamina for their quirks. Now let's start the anime. Deku and Todoroki are going on a jog when Deku says, Can we stop real quick? <sighs> what, tired already? said Todoroki with a smile. No, no, I just need to tie my shoes, said Deku. Yeah, sure, catch up with me when you're done, said Todoroki. Okay, said Deku. The sludge villain, after running from All Might, comes across Deku while he's tying his shoes. Give me your body, human, says the sludge villain, as it jumps Deku and wraps around his legs. Deku immediately burns the ground, including the surrounding area. Suddenly, a large can be heard as All Might descends and creates a tiny crater in the ground and says, Fear not, for I am here. Oh, where's the sludge villain? Oh, I took care of him. You know, just doing your job. Well then, young man, good job. But why are your shoes burned? My shoes? What are you talking about? As Deku looks down, he realizes he just burned his new shoes. God damn it, I just bought these, said Deku. As he grabs his shoes and blasts off. As Suzuki catches up with Todoroki, Todoroki says, What took you so long? And where are your shoes? I burned them because a goddamn villain tried to attack me. What'd you do to the villain? I killed him, of course, said Deku and Todoroki as I rough him. I'm gonna change a few things. There won't be 10 months for Azuka and Todoroki to train for the end of the exam because they're already powerful enough as is. And considering that their bodies are at approximately 5% of one for all, they're already buff enough. So when it's time to take the entrance exam, Azuka decides not to take the recommendation letter because he wants to see how weak everyone else is compared to him and Todoroki. And Todoroki decides to take the recommendation letter because he wants to see just how strong he is compared to the quote unquote elites with recommendations. Because from a young age, Deku and Todoroki have sparred and fought with Endeavor and heroes from his agency. So they have more combat experience than most new heroes. But compared to their older brothers, they're far class, even with their powerful quirks. Due to combat experience and more training, Toya and Natsu have fully mastered their quirks, allowing them to choose what gets burned and what doesn't, and they can create flames out of thin air. You can do short bursts of black flames. Back to Deku and Todoroki. As Deku approaches the entrance exam, it is not him who falls, but it is instead Uraka. As she falls, Deku catches her and brings her into his arms and says, It will be a shame if someone as cute as you were to fall. Uraka, now blushing, bright to made red, now has a swirly eyes, and so she tries to say, th 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 thank, thank you. But by the time she's finished, Deku has already walked away because he thought she was being weird. As Deku walks into the entrance, President Mike is starting his speech, explaining the robots for the exam. And Ida stands up and says, President Mike, how could you forget the zero point robot? That would be a shame if the number one school, UA, actually forgot to explain a part of their exam. Deku being annoyed says, You're interrupting the teacher, so why don't you shut up and let him finish explaining it? Ida, realizing the mistake, says, Oh, sorry, as he bows his head and sits down and thinks, Damn you. Damn you. Whoever you are, you're gonna pay for embarrassing me.
As Special Mike finished explaining the exam, they head to the exam room. Deku scores first in the written exam, then everything else is the same, just people one tier lower. Then they go to the exam site. As soon as the instructor says go, Deku blasts into the air as he shouts, Hell's Rain, and nails many medium sized fireballs into the robots, which then catch fire and blow up surrounding robots in the area. Everyone seeing this is astonished, but then they soon realize that he's taking all the robots, so they rush to catch up. But by using that move, he has blocked off a lot of places because his flames made it where it's too hot to go near those areas. So everybody's pretty much scrambling and fighting over robots because there's barely any left. So Deku's already beaten all my score, he's just showing off at this point. Izuku is just casually flying and blasting robots when he hears a scream for help. He turns to see and is Araka, the girl he caught. Stuck under a rock, so the zero point is walking towards her. Deku, seeing this, immediately encodes himself fully in fire and flies over to her at high speeds. And when he descends and lands, he eats up his hand and punches the rock as easy if it were cutting paper. He then picks up a rock and says, Flame control, sea of hell. As he uses the flames, he uses to fly, then makes them even bigger. As they start going towards the zero pointer as if a giant wave of flames have been moving towards a robot, incinerating everything in its path, destroying the robots in the surrounding area. Deku, realizing how much damage that did, said, Oh, sh**. I should probably distinguish that so nobody dies. As he distinguishes the flames, he begins to fly after the nurse's office drop of Uraka. She says thank you, and he says, No problem, I do anything to save a cute girl. Uraka hearing this faints, Deku says, Hello? Hello? Are, are you good? <sighs> good grief. As he goes faster and drops off Uraka at the nurse's office. Now back to Todoroki. As Todoroki is walking to the recommendation site, he's greeted by Inasa. Because in this would have, Todoroki is going to be more approachable because not as cold as the original. Because it is kind of parents and a better family. And Nasa says, Hi, I'm Nasa. What's your name? My name's Shoto Todoroki. Oh, you're one of the sons of Endeavor and Frost, the Ice Queen. Also, Frost is going to be English to your name. Yeah, no big deal. Are you nervous about the exams, and Nasa? No, my older brothers told me about it. It's just a dumb race. And I already know I'm going to win, so I'm not stressed. I won't be too sure if that if I were you, said to Nasa. And who's going to stop me? You? Not to brag, but I'm pretty fast myself. We'll see about that. As Todoroki and Nasa reach the race site, they both got into race positions. As the president makes it go, Todoroki immediately froze the ground, freezing all the other contestants, and proceeds to boost himself forward with his ice. And Nasa, seeing the ice coming, propels himself up with his winds and darts forward. Todoroki, seeing that Nasa is catching up, says, Ice control, cold rain. As the ice Todoroki was using to boost himself forward is now being shot at Nasa in the form of medium sized spears of ice. Nasa slows down and creates a barrier wind around him so the ice spears are being redirected off of him and the other contestants in the race. Seeing this, Nasa rushes to save them and redirects the spears of ice with a strong gust of wind, directing the ice spears to an unused part of the track. But by the time he finishes the race, Todoroki has already finished the race and has grabbed the water from himself and Nasa. I thought you were fast, said Todoroki, as he handed a water bottle to the panting Nasa. I am. You're just too good. Yeah, I know. Well, you did better than I expected. Not better than me, but adequate. Thanks. See you tomorrow, said Todoroki, as he walked away. Next day, Deku and Todoroki walk in the class one day. Everyone approaches Deku because they thought his score was amazing, but they also want to know who Todoroki is. And also approaches Todoroki and Deku because in this world, if he decides to go to UA, and Nasa says, Oh, I didn't know you had a brother, Shoto. Who's this? said Deku. Todoroki said, Oh, it's just someone I met during the recommendation exam. Oh, is he strong then? Not as strong as us, but he's strong enough. While they're talking, Uraka comes up and taps Deku on his shoulder and says, Thanks for saving me. Who's this? said Todoroki. She's a girl I said in the exam. As we were introducing themselves to each other, the man in the sleeping bag said, If you're just here to make friends and you can leave, put on your gym clothes and go outside. Who are you? I'm your home home teacher, Aizawa. As well as started to drive off of Aizawa, everyone just stared at him. Then he said, Did I stutter? Pack up your shit and go outside for a quick assessment. Whoever fails is expelled. Hearing this, everyone besides Deku and Todoroki are shocked. When they head outside, they begin the test. The first test is the grip string test. Everyone else does the exact same, but Deku heats up the metal bar and easily grips it. Todoroki freezes the hand grip and easily grips it. And also, when gripping, uses air currents to help him move the hand grip and easily grips it. I don't remember the scores for the side to side race, but for the ball throw, Paco is still at 705.2 meters. But in this way, if one it's Deku's turn, he encodes the ball on fire and blasts it up in the sky, getting 200 kilometers. So, 200,000 meters. When it comes to Todoroki, he encodes the ball on ice and shoot up, or getting 200 kilometers. Now, when it's in Nasa's turn, he encodes the ball on wind, then gathers multiple air currents and fires it off into the sky. 
Due to being able to control the air currency, he gets 100,000 meters or 100 kilometers. Or 100 kilometers, not kilometers. So we're just gonna skip the heroes versus villains fight. But, okay, so the matchup's gonna be Deku and Todoroki as the heroes and Nas and Baku as the villains. Deku and Todoroki are now the same hero costumes, and their hero costumes are gonna be made of their hair and other materials that are resistant to their elements. When All Might says go, both sides are preparing a strategy. In this order, since Baku's with his power Deku and Todoroki, he's gonna be more defensive. So he decides to stay with the Nasa to protect the bombs that are going to fight. Deku, on the other hand, decides to fight them head on solo because he doesn't think they'll be a challenge. Deku says, I'll take care of it. You can take a nap. Alright, wake me up when you're done, says Todoroki. Deku then proceeds to blast himself forward to capture the bomb. As Deku arrives at the bomb site, he sees Baku and Nasa. Where the hell's Frosty? Is he too scared to fight me? said Baku. No, I just told him to take a nap. It doesn't take two people to deal with weaklings. Fuck you, said Baku. I'll show you who's a weakling, Nasa says. Well, I just want to see how strong you are compared to him. As he says, wind blades. As he shoots blades of wind towards Deku, Deku immediately creates a wall of fire and says, Devil's Ring. As he then puts up a ring of flame around him and Nasa and Baku, blocking them from the bomb. Also making Nasa's winds weaker since the flames are too hot and consuming too much oxygen. Damn, he said Baku. You think you're so clever for eating the area. Well, the more I sweat, the stronger I become. And you just gave me more firepower, you damn idiot. Oh, great. Now when I kick your ass, you won't have anything to complain about. Fuck you, said Baku. As he jumped forward to punch Deku. Deku, seeing this, grabs his arm, spins, and throws him. Baku blasts off his feet towards Deku and goes to punch Deku. But when Deku tries to react, he blasts himself up with his hands and lands a spinning explosion kick to Deku's shoulder, blowing him back. Deku then clutches his face and starts to kneel. <laughs> what are you gonna pee yourself? This is what you get for talking down to me, you damn fool. And Nasa looking at Deku's clothes, realizing that they weren't burned and there were no scratches, backs up and powers up. Gusts of wind. What, you scared, Gusty? He's already down. I put 40% into that blast. There's no way he's. As Baku stops, he sees Deku begin to stand up as. <laughs> Oh my god, Baku. I thought this was actually going to be a challenge, but it turns out your blasts only amount to this much. They're never going to be hot enough to burn me. And Nasa immediately shoots a piercing gust of wind towards Deku. But before they can hit Deku, Deku coats his body in fire, and when the wind hits Deku, it just dissipates, because Deku's flames are too hot to the point where they're burning the oxygen. So at this point, Nasa's winds have been rendered useless. Hey, Gusty, help me. I've been stockpiling my swims these columns for one final blast. So if the last blast was not enough to kill him, then this one will, said Baku, as he unleashes both gauntlets, and then Nasa feeds the blast with his air currents, making Baku's blast blue. Izuku, seeing the blast coming, just faces it head on and walks toward it. Baku and Nasa wheezing said, How was that? After the dust cleared, Deku with a smile on his face said, Oh, that felt like a nice warm breeze. Well, it was fun, but it's time to end this, said Deku as he walked forward and kicked the Nasa in the chest, knocking him out, and then said, Have a nice rest, Firecracker, as he punched Baku in the face, knocking him out. All Might then said, The heroes win. Todoroki hearing this says, Oh, finish already? I was having a good dream too. As he got up and walked to Deku, Baku and Nasa were taken to the infirmary, and then they left the school and they proceeded home. While Todoroki and Deku were being driven home, Shua said, Well, how was it? They were weak, nothing I couldn't handle. What about Nasa? He would have done better against anybody else but me, because I can just burn the oxygen. Cheers to Todoroki. Now it gets to Nasa. As Nasa was leaving the infirmary, he punched the wall and said, Damn it! How am I going to catch up to those powerhouses? All Might then appeared and said, Young man, you too can be as strong as them, or even stronger. But how? They're just too strong, it's impossible. Fear not, for I can grant you the power you need. I can grant you what you need to accomplish your goals. For this gift that I will give you, it shall transcend every quirk, and it will bestow upon you unlimited power. Really? How is that even possible? As All Might started to lift his shirt, and Nasa pulled it down and said, Slow your roll, old man, I don't swing that way. What? No, 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 Jesus, no. As he lifted his shirt, All Might explained the battle between him and Alpha One and the origin of One for All and said, now, young man, would you accept my power and become the ninth successor one for all? Now we get to the Yoshe. As 13 will explain the rescue sites, the villains start to appear. And as Aizawa said to stay back, they were all teleported to different areas. Everybody was teleported to the same areas like in the original, except Anasa. 
I'm just gonna say that now so after being teleported, I immediately went to get the arrows. After Deku was teleported in the water, he immediately burned the lake, immediately turning into a steam and killed the villains in the water. I see you grab my net and got on the boat before they were burned by Deku's attack. After turning the water into steam, Deku immediately flew up into the air and started hailing spears of flame towards the villain saving his classmates. Todoroki, after being teleported, froze the entire site, freezing the hearts of every villain that was there, and then proceeds to propel himself with his eyes to defeat villains and help his classmates. As Deku and Todoroki have already taken care of the main villains, they then head to the middle with Aizawa. Seeing the villains beating Aizawa, Todoroki and Deku immediately went to join the fight. Deku is shooting a flurry of flames, burning the villains, and Todoroki is shooting a rapid amount of ice, penetrating the villains. Shigaraki, seeing this, tells Anomu to attack them. Deku, seeing the Anomu coming, shoots a blast of fire towards Anomu. Kuroguri, seeing this, teleports the flame and redirects it back towards Deku, but then Deku stops it from coming at him and splits into many different little beams of fire and then shoots him back at Kuroguri, burning him. But before Deku ignites him on Kuroguri's body, he teleports the flame towards Todoroki, but Todoroki, having an absolute zero body, is completely unaffected. Anomu, still charging Deku, is about to punch him, but is then stopped by Todoroki. As Todoroki says, Hypothermic blast. As Todoroki shoots a beam of controlled ice that goes directly through the Nomu, leaving a giant gap in his chest, then starts to freeze the Nomu's body. And then Todoroki says, Break, as the Nomu's body is shattered. H how did you know that it wasn't alive, said Shiraki. I didn't. I don't hold back when it comes to the lives of villains. Aren't you trying to be a hero? Every villain that's left alive results in the death of civilians. It's my job to protect the good people, not the scum of society, says Todoroki, as he shoots another hypothermic blast towards Shigaraki, but then Shigaraki and Tomar were teleported to the villain hideout. Damn it, said Shigaraki. Those bastards. I swear I'll kill them. It is then at that moment when the heroes arrive, as All Might then says, I am here. As he and the heroes look around, they realize that the battlefield is ruled with burned and frozen villains. As they consult the students, they realize that Deku and Todoroki took care of all the villains. After congratulating Deku and Todoroki, school is closed for two weeks through the stress of villain attack and the sports festival. Bako, seeing Deku and Todoroki's power, says, Damn you, white hair, back I'll become stronger than you and beat you into submission. Now he skips to the sports festival race. As Midnight tells Deku to say the pledge, he walks up to the stage and says, I pledge to kick your ass. If you don't want to get burned, then get out of the arena. No one is booing him because they know he has the power to back it up. Endeavor Toya not to enrage just smile and smirk from the stands. I'm not gonna say it twice. As soon as the instructor says go, Deku immediately blasts forward, leaving a trail of fire in his way. Next to another, then Todoroki and Nanasa, Bako far away curse him as he tries to catch up. The race ends in a tie. Now to the next horse. Deku, Todoroki, and Nanasa each have 333,333.33 point bandanas, and Bako gets one more point than the original to even it up. Now to the cavalry battle. Deku pairs up with Uraka and Todoroki and Momo, and Nasa and Ashido. I'm just going to add in Ashido for Inasa's pairing because they're both outgoing and I can't really think of anyone else for the role. As Menace says go, Inasa wraps them all in the wind, flies them in the air, and they simply wait until the time limit is over and win. Now we're going to go to the battles because nobody cares about the side games. Deku vs Shinzo. Shinzo starts attacking with Deku. I can't believe the monkey actually gave up. What a loser. No wonder he's from class 1A. What an idiot. Instead of getting mad like in the original, Deku just casually walks forward, grabs Shinzo, and throws him out of the ring. Why don't you respond? Aren't you concerned about your friend? Sorry, I don't have time to be worrying about weaklings as he walked off the stage. The next match is Todoroki vs. Bako. As they both walk on the stage, Bako says, You and your damn brother might as well quit because I've trained long enough to beat the both of you. You can say whatever you want to make yourself feel better, weakling. It's not going to change the fact that you're never going to be better than me. Damn you, Frosty, said Bako as he lunges forward and says, Flash grenade! As Baku shoots a blast that is so bright that it blinds Todoroki and members in the crowd. Todoroki, not being able to see, wraps himself in a cocoon of ice and shoots out ice from all directions. Cementos immediately steps in and puts up a wall, blocking the ice rays from hurting anyone in the audience. Baku, barely dodging him as he is being pierced and scraped by the spears, but he then begins to blast himself forward as he says, Houtzer impact, as he blasts himself forward, spinning, propelling himself with his explosions to make contact with the Todoroki's ice cocoon. And that's of a giant explosion, which blasts Todoroki back, but then he then forms a wall of ice behind him and lowers the temperature to make it snow, and lands into it so he isn't hurt by the backlash. How's that, huh? Frosty said Bako. To be honest, I was kind of expecting more from you. That was nowhere near hot enough for me to even feel it. But I guess I can only expect this much from weaklings. Now it's time to end this, said Todoroki as he walked up and said, Ice Age. 
As Todoroki was letting off extremely cold ice from his body, changing the temperature of the weather, making it freezing cold. It's so cold that everyone in the stands can be seen moving towards Endeavor because it's too cold to feel anything. As Todoroki starts to lower the temperature even more, the ice starts to form around Baku's body, and he's so cold that his body can't form sweat, so he's frozen in place. As Todoroki casually walks up to him, looks at Baku and says, This is the difference between us weakling, as he kicks Baku in the face, knocking him out. As Todoroki stops freezing the ice, Midnight stutters, Show to wins! Next up, Deku vs. Nasa. As Deku and Nasa walk him to the stage, and Nasa says, I've been trained to beat you. Well then, don't disappoint me, said Deku. Nasa then starts to gather one around his arms, and the audience can just feel the wind blowing at them. Deku encodes himself in white flames and gets ready to take on Nasa's attack, but Nasa says, Futin's punch! As he's 100% of one for all and lets off a giant shockwave from his air punch. It is then boosted with his own quirk, which damages his arm, creating a giant mass of air pressure that bursts towards Deku. Deku, in response to Nasa's move, says, Kagasuchi's fury as he lets off a giant wave of white flame towards Nasa's attack. As Deku and Nasa are at a standstill with their giant blast, Nasa says, Ready to give up? No, I'm just getting started, said Deku. You should know by now, my flames can burn through anything. As he increases the heat of his flames and makes them larger as they start to consume Nasa's blast. And Nasa starts to try and add more power, but the more wind there is, the stronger Deku's attack becomes. So Nasa, realizing that he's losing while controlling the Foon Punch with his damaged left hand, uses his other fist to let off another Foon Punch. But Deku, seeing this immediately heats up the other flames and devours the first Foon Punch, then blasts himself forward with the flames and says, Kagatsuchi's Punch! As Nasa blasts himself forward and says, Futin's Punch! As they both glide, a giant explosion could be heard, almost like in the anime between Deku and Todoroki. But Cementos doesn't stop the blast, causing a catastrophic result. As the dust was clearing, Izuku said, Woo! Woo! That's the most anyone's ever pushed me. I'm impressed. As Inasa was struggling to stand up, he says, Thanks. As he passed out and fell. Midnight then declared Deku the winner. None of the final fight, Deku vs. Todoroki. When Midnight said go, Deku and Todoroki immediately jumped off the stage. Midnight said, What are you doing? Our quirks don't work against each other, so there's no point in just having slug vested to the both of them. Unless it's disappointing, then Mana declared it a tie for first place. So Deku, Todoroki, and Nas and Bako each receive their medals. Bako would still be chained up, and when All Might goes on the roar and takes off his mouth guard, he shouts, I swear I'll beat those damn twins! They think they're better than me? Screw them! I swear I will- As Bako is soon interrupted, as All Might just shoves the medal in his mouth, making him pass out. Next day at UA, it's time for the hero names. Deku's hero name is going to be Kagatsuchi, the Japanese god of fire. Shoto's name is going to be Suijin, the Japanese god of water. Technically, he can shoot out water, but ice is far more affected. And there's no Shinto god of ice, so, yeah. Nasa is going to be Futen, the god of wind. And Baku is going to be changed to Blast, because that just sounds way cooler than King Explosion Murder. Okay, so now to agencies. So Deku and Toto are going to meet with Endeavor, Toy, and Natsu training and taking down villains when they get a report about the attack at Hozu. And the original reason Endeavor went to Hozu was to deal with Stan, so they're going to go to Hozu. But in this sort of, Ida dies. Deku doesn't have Ida's number because they're not friends and Endeavor was on a different side of Hozu. And in the original, Todoroki has to actively search and actually look for Deku. So Deku and Todoroki are just going to be helping out rescuing some villains from the fire and taking out the Nomos. Next day. Ida is pronounced dead, some of the class cries, but Baku, Deku, and Shoto think it was his fault for challenging someone stronger than him. Well, this starts by Deku and Todoroki going for an assault, but the quirks were quickly cancelled, causing him to have to fight hand-to-hand -hand combat. Shoto and Deku were taught martial arts, but Aizawa was practically a ninja, so he beats him and ties him up. And, uh, yeah, that's it. So, now to Baku and Anasa versus All Might. Anasa and Baku decide to take All Might head-on. After a few minutes, they locate All Might. All Might seeing them sends a Detroit smash towards them. Baku dodges, but Nasa decides to redirect the airways upward and then adds more power to it and then drops on All Might and then says, Futin's hammer! As All Might is struggling to stand up because of the air pressure from the blast, as All Might is left standing in place trying to resist Nasa's attack, Baku says, Take this! And let's have a giant explosion, blowing All Might into a building, making him injured and bloody as All Might jumps off from the building, landing in the middle of both of them. They both jump back, but they then both hit with Detroit smashes, causing them to be thrown across the site. Bako, after getting up, starts to run, then jumps up and says, Houtzer missile, as he propels himself up with his blast. Then Nasa, seeing Bako, uses the air coin to pull Bako straight towards All Might. Bako, after being pulled towards All Might, slaps him and lets off a giant explosion, blasting him towards Nasa. 
Nasa then decides to intercept All Might. He powers up his version of full cowling. I'm gonna call it Wind Number. Nasa has 68% of one full and says, Futin's punch! As All Might is then punched in the back, knocking him down. And as he struggles to get back up, Baka lists off one of the explosion from his gauntlets, blasting All Might through the buildings, knocking him out. And then Recovery Girl announced that they have won. Now then, to the training camp. As soon as they arrive, they then put in the forest with the Walmart Pussycats. Deku, Todoroki, and Nasa each go their several ways, flying through the woods and destroying monsters as they go. And as they go, Baku thinks, Damn you! I swear I'll cast up to you and beat you. As Deku and Todoroki arrived early, they in showered. Deku doesn't approach Koda because he doesn't care about kids, so his nuts are safe. But instead, it's Nasa. Everyone seeing this just knows to stay away from Koda. Now they're training. Everyone's training is going to be the same other than Deku, Todoroki, and Nasa's training. Nasa's training consists of weightlifting and trying to focus on controlling more air currents than usual. Deku's training is going to consist of flame patrol. He's going to be letting fire and trying to control what gets burned and what doesn't. He's also trying to learn the ability to manifest flames out of thin air. Todoroki's training consists of trying to manifest his eyes out of thin air and learn to better control it with the liquids. Now the villain attack. Deku realizing that Koda isn't near his aunt, blasts off the look for him. He then sees Koda on the mountain, about to be killed by Muscular. As Koda is punched off the mountain by Muscular, he's then caught by Deku. Oh, looks like there's a hero. What, do you want to die too? I honestly hate scum like you. Burn in hell, said Deku as he snapped his fingers. Muscular's body was enveloped in white flames, completely incinerating him. Deku then proceeds to bring Koda to a safe place, and they go to help the rest of the students. After that, they realize the villains are there. As Al and Sedger, a class 1B teacher, easily get to the other students since Sabi isn't there. Meaning that they get to Momo and the other students faster. So now it's Todoroki and Baka against Mr. Compress and Toga. Mr. Compress compresses Baka. Todoroki shoots a flurry of ice, but Kuroki has already teleported them away. As Baka and the villains are teleported away, now the item. So, Katsuki Bakugo, do you want power? Power to change the world. Power to make a world where only the strong survive and the weak are killed. Will you accept this power and join the League of Villains set off one? Yes, as long as I'm strong enough to kill those damn twins. Fine by me. Well then, Katsuki Bakugo, I bestow upon you the quirks of hyper sweat, azide acid sweat, and recoil body, allowing you to be able to produce monumental blasts compared to what you had before. The azide sweat. The azide acid is the most explosive chemical, and hyper so has to draw out even more firepower. In recoil bodies help lessen the strain of your blast. You will still feel pain, but you will be able to lessen it by exercising, strengthening your real core body, greatly reducing the strength of your new blast. But this doesn't really change anything. Before you were able to release infinite small scale blasts because they didn't cause large scale repressions in your body. But now with the added effect of your hyper sweat and other quirks, it may be too tough for your body to handle. So for now, instead of hyper so I actually give you fire palms and feet, you will be able to create fire only through your hands and feet, allowing you to create large scale blasts by amplifying the spark of your explosion with your flames. For now, train your body so that you can maintain your blast, and to help you with this, I'm giving you muscle growth. In this way, your body will destroy and rebuild your muscles faster than any normal humans, making your muscles a lot bigger and stronger. And from now on, your villain name is Boom, and this is your new gear. Look at the screen because that's going to be his new hair costume. If you want further power, then ask the doctor for some upgrades. And you'll become the right hand of Shigaraki, my successor, as the leader of the League of Villains. You two will carry the world into a new age of power. We're only the powerful respected and we can cast it aside. Okay, so now we're going to skip to the rescue. By any change of feelings again. Momo doesn't get injured because Todoroki protector and Deku was there. Also, Deku and Todoroki don't go to Kirishima and neither does Momo. Deku and Todoroki convince Momo to go because it would be too dangerous and reckless. They also convince her not to give Kirishima the track because they realize it would be too dangerous to him because he has no backup because that little sh** Ida is dead. And after repeated protests, they would convince Nelson not to go. Also, don't be surprised when Ida dies in the future because I just hate that forward bastard. Now, the fight between All Might and All For One goes the same except Baku doesn't resist the villains when told to get into the portal as they teleport away. Yue is under stress because they failed to rescue Baka when he became a villain, so they're under constant attack from the media, worsening their reputation as a number one school. The students still move into the dorms. So now we'll be doing the ultimate move of training for 10 days. Since Deku and Todoroki have been training with Endeavor for like all their lives, they've already developed hero modes. 
So the only change that can be their hero costumes. So Deku's hero costume is gonna look like Todoroki's one in the manga, and Todoroki is gonna look like Inka's one in the picture above. Also, the only change in Nasu will make towards his costume would be the new air gauntlets that would shoot out air that he can then control and propel in the form of a strong attack. It would also allow him to shoot more controlled bursts of wind, making his attacks smaller but stronger. So now that the provisional last exam, when the test starts, Todoroki blasts himself into the air and says, Ice Age, as he frees the entire arena and some contestants. Deku surrounds the rest of his classmates with fire so the ice doesn't affect them. Then the class one simply takes the balls and puts them on the frozen contestants of the other classes, failing all the other students from the other classes. Now the other part of the exam. As they were told to the rest of the civilians, Todoroki converts his wasteland of ice into snow, then water, letting the civilians down safely. Then Deku sends a wave of fire on the arena, heating them up. Then the rest of the students are resting the civilians when Gang Orca and his gang came. But because of Todoroki's attack at the beginning, freezing the arena and turning into ice and snow, there aren't any injured civilians. So the test ends, and all of one has received their hero licenses. So now to the work studies explanation by the Big Three. The Big Three is going to change to the Big Five. Instead of Mario being the number one, he's going to be the number three because not so in toward third years. And they're both equal in strength. So now to Mario beating the students. And now so Todoroki and Deku are told to stand by and watch since they're the strongest of the class. Now to the meeting between Oval and Shigaraki. As they start fighting, Bakugo says, well then, I guess it's time to test on my new move, Explosive Barrage. As Bakugo left off pellets of his explosion from his Montan machine gun on his shoulder, and he heats up his hands and sends pellets of explosions to Overhaul's group exploding on impact. Overhaul uses his members as human shields, killing them. As Overhaul revives his members, and says, Well, let's cool off. We can talk about negotiations another time. As him and his crew leave. Now to work studies. Deku and Todoroki go to Endeavor and Nico's agency, but Natsu goes to Deku's place to study with Night Eye. Now the discussion of Overall's accused group, Omni said that Endeavor was also invited as the number one hero for backup. Now the battle. After Night Eye received intel of where Eri was, they proceeded to launch an assault. As soon as they arrived, the Natsu created wind colors and choked the villains, knocked them out, allowing all the heroes and the villains to enter the Yakuza hideout. We and Nata went separately to the other villains and heroes, helping Fakon and Night Eye. As they bowled us through, Endeavor and Deku showed and Nasa to fly straight through the hideout. So this way, Mira would have backup. As Mira was fighting over one winning, he tossed the ammo of Quirk stealing bullets so the other Yakuza member. But at that moment, the box of ammo was ignited and burning, killing the Yakuza member and the Quirk erasing bullets. As Endeavor, his sons, and Nasa arrive, and Nasa says, Futin's judgment! As Nasa wraps her wind around Overhaul's neck, choking him. Then, as Overhaul is on the ground, saying, Stop! He then says, oh, you can't breathe? Well, it looks like you need some air then, as Nasa, as he left the choke and color wind around Overhaul and says, human balloon. As Overhaul breathed in air, Nasa started pushing large amounts of air inside of Overhaul, and then he started to increase it, making Overhaul's head as big as a balloon, as he says, please, no, I'm begging you. Well, you didn't stop when you're ripping air to shreds, you monster, so why should I stop now? Or problem with your life, you damn scum. And then a splatter can be heard as Overall's head exploded due to the air pressure. So, Overall and his gang are dead, but so is Twice and Toga, because Toya and Natsu aren't merciful. The other changes that occurred to this were the livelihood of Sir Night Eye, because they wouldn't be dead, and she argued he wouldn't have the court destroying bullets. And in the manga, most of them are destroyed, so it doesn't really matter. So, now the music festival. As Class 1 is dancing and showing the musical town, suddenly, explosion can be heard as villains and gnomes start breaking through the roof, appearing in the gym. Bakugo says, Dragon's Burst, as he lets off a giant blast, killing most of the people in the crowd. The heroes and the students immediately start to try to combat the villains and gnomas, but most of them aren't wearing their hero costumes, so they're at a direct disadvantage. Deku creates a barrier of heat around the villains and creates a path for them to escape. As they're escaping, Bakugo says, Ha! None of my watch, as he says, Demonic Barrage, as he then lets off pellets of his explosions on the roof. As it starts to crumble and fall, Todoroki creates a roof of ice over the heads to protect them. As soon as you are fighting the villains, the heroes are fighting against the Nomos. And Nasa says, You guys take care of the Nomos and the villains, I'll take care of Bakugo. And Nasa says, Wind Emperor, as he powers up to 80% of one fall, flies towards Bakugo and says, Futin's Punch, and uses 100% of one for all, and punches Bakugo in the face, breaking Bakugo's jaw. Bakugo with blood in his mouth spits out, looks at Nasa and says, Pfft. That was pretty strong, Gusty. Both one has done a lot worse than that to me, as he then says, Counter Punch! As Bakugo punches Nasa in the cup, two times the strength of his food and punch, blasting Nasa across the gym, 
as he crashes and lands in a wall. Baka, seeing that Todoroki, Deku, and Endeavor are struggling to use their quirks since they're in a contained environment with bystanders, starts to kill his students in 1A, and in his blast, he ended up killing Raka. You bitch, said Deku, as he shot a spear of flame towards Baku. Baku caught the flame with his fire hand and was about to throw back to Deku when Deku says, Spread, as the flame starts to incinerate parts of Baku, blowing him in his sweat up, causing a giant explosion. He says, Finally. But as he's turning around, he sees Baku and his body start to regenerate and says, Huh? And Baku says, Huh, you thought you can kill me with that? Nice try. I ripped off my head and threw it before I can explode. You really went so far as to turn yourself into a Nomu? For what? Power? Yes, power. Power to kill you damn twins and everything you care for. As Baku then says, My body adjusted temperature. That flame spirit was your last chance to kill me. Impossible, said Deku, as he said. Hell's Blade! As he concentrated a part of his flames into a sword, heating it up. It's so hot that everyone in the arena starts to sweat as they see a shining, blazing white sword of flames. What are you doing? I already told you that that was your last chance. It doesn't matter if that was my last chance. You made yourself a walk in TNT, and I'm the spark. So even if my flames don't kill you, your own quirk will. As Deku blasted himself to it, Baku seeing this was trying to escape. But as soon as Deku caught up with him, he sliced him into tiny bits, causing a giant explosion. As Baku's hands had survived and were regrowing his old body, Todoroki said, Dead Zero. As he shot a blast fight, so cold his surrounding air started to form snow. As it hit Baku's body, it froze every cell in his body. And then a bead in the nozzle stands him and says, Air present. As he formed a burial wind around the frozen Baku and started making the ball of wind smaller and smaller. Crushing Baku, ripping his body into shreds. As Inasa closed his hands, Baku has then been killed, and not a part of him remains, as it has now been crushed by the air pressure. As the security team for UA comprised of pro heroes arrived, they helped secure the safety of the civilians and students. After the event is over, the media has lessened their attack on UA, but they're still trying to shame them for Baku turning into a villain. Now the hero debut. Endeavor the King of Fire, as a number one hero. Side note, I had to re-record, because I don't know why. Like, I just, I was editing this, and then I saw the audio was bad, so, and then I just lost my, yeah, I just lost my, um, aux cord, so I'm gonna have to find that again, or buy a new one. Okay, so. Frost, the Ice Queen, Orango, as the number two hero, and Hawks, as the number three hero, and so on. Now to the fight between Endeavor and the Nomo. In this fight, Inko will also be there, so things will go a lot smoother and faster than in the original. There also wouldn't be any casualties because she could just freeze the buildings from falling. And the media wouldn't backtalk Endeavor because he didn't struggle in the fight between him and the Nomo because him and his wife got the damage to a minimum. And that is it. Sorry that this video took so long to come out. Like, I had someone else supposed to edit this, but they kind of bailed, and then I had to like struggle while doing that with school. But I'm going to try to at least um, post like three videos, at least this week and next week. That's my goal, because after that, then I have to also start setting for finals. So that's going to be great. And then I have to go for vacation, so I'm just going to try to stockpile videos. But so originally this video, like the, I mean, the unmovied part, just like the part one, part two, part three thing had like 7,000 views. And at first I said I couldn't edit it because, um, like, it would take too much time in the manga. But now the manga's, I mean, I have a good sense of what Shigaraki's capable of. So, after this, I'm gonna, um, make the fourth one, upon with, like, all my other videos. But, so, if you don't want to be spoiled further, then don't watch the second half of the movie. And, uh, yeah. Sub. Don't be a bitch. Bye.